it's sometimes hard really trying to figure out exactly why this piano sounds a little inferior to the other one and that 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 can be challenging right there because uh, there are a lot of things that go into the I mean, it's got what 10,000 parts in it Right out of uh, piano school, uh, I went to Jackson, Mississippi and associated with uh, a Yamaha Baldwin dealer of Mississippi music in Jackson, Mississippi. And I was there uh, for about nine years uh, until I had an opportunity to interview with, for a position at the factory in Baldwin in Truman, Arkansas. And I was subsequently hired initially as uh, uh, to work in the quality department. And then later on, uh, I was the supervisor of the repair of the pianos that returned to the factory for uh, warranty repair. And so all in all, I was self-employed for almost 10 years and worked at Baldwin for about uh, 13. In the, uh, the tech service department, when I was supervisor of that department, I had, I had several people working for me. I don't remember exactly the number, five or six people that did different functions. Because we, we had to do things from either replacing back assemblies in upright pianos to uh, you know, restringing grand pianos. And um, there were quite a variety of skills that were involved in, in the tech service. It was just kind of like a little small repair shop, I suppose. In 2001, uh, they ceased operations and, they, and I think they were bought out by... I worked until they were bought out by Gibson Guitar. Yeah. And then uh, I had to go looking elsewhere and so <laughs> I uh, responded to an ad in the Piano Technician's Journal that I didn't know who it was at the time but it was the Atlantic Music Center and I interviewed in July of, of 2002 and came to work here in August of 2002. Well I see reconditioning as taking the existing parts and and filing hammers, cutting, getting rid of the string cuts certainly regulating but you're not re really replacing any parts you're just trying to recondition and and optimize what's there rebuilding would involve um, replacing parts and and the extent of the rebuild is to the extent of the parts that are replaced all all the way to replacing the pin block uh, I guess well or replacing the pin block the soundboard the basic structure of the piano and restringing and that sort of thing most a lot of a lot of times you I mean you can rebuild a piano without to a certain extent without replacing all those parts but I think rebuilding involves replacing the parts you get the action rebuild and then you have the 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 structural rebuild that's involved in the um, in the piano a reconditioned piano is not a rebuilt piano I think this seems to, uh, a person has to decide what it is they want out of an instrument. I mean, a reconditioned instrument may be appropriate for a certain person, but, you, but I think they need to know what it is that, that they're getting and what they're, and the price they're paying. You don't want to pay a rebuilding price for a re reconditioned piano. If it sounds good and you like it, be confident of the person that you're buying it from. And beyond that, unless you have someone that's trained in the industry to examine it for you, to appraise it for you. You're, you're really dependent upon um, what the person tells you about the piano. But there is a lot, you can tell, because if you, 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 we have senses for a reason, and they tell us about our environment. And if you're playing a piano and you, the piano doesn't play right, or it feels sluggish to you, or, uh, or, or whatever, there's some hindrance there, or if it sounds a little funny to you, then at least ask about it. But I think as far as uh, uh, you could expect the quality of a rebuild to be, uh, the, a piano that's rebuilt to be overall a better piano than one that's been reconditioned. Pianos are, they operate under physical laws of mechanics and uh, you, you mess up the mechanics, then you've, you've messed up the way it plays. You're gonna, you are gonna hinder. You can make a, a, a piano heavier in touch and uh, all, I mean, it, it goes, it gets into the geometry of the action and the, and the, the action ratios and things like that. You don't want to, 
you don't want to change uh, anything. So it is, as far as the action is concerned, and then the, the soundboard just setting the, the height of the plate uh, so that it's uh, appropriate, has appropriate down bearing. And all that's, all that's impos important. It goes into how well the piano plays and how well it sounds. In Germany, when I saw the uh, manufacturing process of how solidly built that, that rim is, and I mean, the structural integrity of the piano is foundational to good sound. And anytime you have a gap anywhere in, in that, it's, you know, it, it's like a, a sound sink. It just absorbs sound, so you're losing some sound. There's an old saying, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear, and I think that you, you need a good instrument to begin with. The instrument needs to be solid. And then after that, uh, it needs to be able to be regulated well. Uh, and, and hammers are just, good hammers are crucial to the, the sound of the piano. And, and after that, then, the, and of course, the, the, the hammers need to be matched to the, the action so that you don't have a, uh, a heavier hammer that increases the touch of the, of the piano and the feel of the piano. And then it has to be well regulated so that the force, so you're maximizing the, the power of the instrument. My old instructor at school used to say that, you, that every piano needs ESP, evenness, speed, and power. If there's something that's off from that, there's a reason for it. I was thinking about this the other day, of the number of employees here at Atlantic Music Center. I know four, at least, that play the piano, and two, at least, that play professionally. Plus, you have an owner that is a highly accomplished musician, so he knows what a good piano sounds and feels like, and he demands that from the people that work for him and also from the instruments that he, that he sells. You've got people that, that know the piano from the artist standpoint, they know it from the technical standpoint, and that's a good combination. And then when you have a, a policy that, that guarantees customer satisfaction, how can you go wrong?